Hey, Chem Stars, we are back. We got the Z Dog, Wally G, and Miss Newton here today. We got the Chem Mojo, and we're here to tell you guys about electrolysis, electrolytic cells. So, what we've got here today is uh, copper 2 nitrate or copper 2 sulfate can be used as well. Uh, we've got a concentration of 0.2 moles per liter. A uh, key difference in electrolytic cells is that we are supplying power, electrical energy, into a non-spontaneous uh, chemical reaction, forcing this uh, reaction to become a spontaneous reaction. Uh, so that's a key difference between electrolytic and voltaic cells is a power supply is used to convert electrical energy into chemical energy. In addition, we have our anode, our, pardon me, our cathode is connected to the negative terminal. This black wire connected to the power supply. We have our anode now is connected to the positive terminal. So the uh, labels for positive and negative is opposite when comparing these electrolytic cells to voltaic cells. Um, taking a look at our entities and going over to the smart board now, we have an aqueous solution of copper 2 um, sulfate. So, consulting your data book table, uh, you would see that the copper ions, Cu2 positive, um, is forming our um, cathode half reaction. Our strongest reducing agent is water, and so that will be featured at our anode. And remember, whether it's a voltaic cell or an electrolytic cell, reduction occurs at the cathode. And here we have Z-Dog's uh, Ruby the Red Cat. She's part of Z-Dog's gang, reminding you that reduction occurs at the cathode, whether it's voltaic or um, electrolytic cell. All right, and then you can determine the net equation. Uh, where it says minimum voltage, uh, this uh, refers to the minimum voltage that you would need to supply into the system. Another key difference between electrolytic and voltaic cells is that the net voltage for an electrolytic cell will always be negative. Whereas in voltaic cell, net voltage is always positive in a spontaneous reaction. So that's a key difference. Looking at the cell, just in terms of analysis, uh, we have some gas bubbles that are produced around our carbon anode. We have uh, copper plating. Copper metal has been plated out onto our cathode. So the copper ions have been reduced into copper atoms as illustrated by the cathode half reaction. So to wrap up, to summarize, we have a power supply putting energy into this system. It's an electrolytic cell at our cathode. Reduction is occurring. Our cathode is labeled negative here in this cell. Uh, the cathode reaction shows the uh, reduction of copper ions into copper atoms. Our anode is uh, labeled positive. We have oxygen gas bubbles produced at the, ad, at the anode. And in addition, you can see the evidence of hydrogen ions produced here as the blue litmus turns to red. So this concludes a demonstration of electroplating, uh, which is one of the functions of electrolysis. We're back with uh, Hoffman's apparatus. This is another design for an electrolytic cell. Uh, here we have an H-shaped glass tubing, and this allows us to collect uh, gases at the cathode and anode in separate compartments. 
Uh, notice that in both of our designs for electrolytic cells, there is no salt bridge or porous cup. That's because you want immediate uh, mixing and commingling of ions. Um, in addition, we have um, added a bromothymol blue indicator to our sodium sulfate solution. And as you can see, we're uh, using, we have electrodes in our cell as well. This time we're using platinum electrodes, uh, very tiny inert electrodes in the cell. Um, on your left, you can see that um, quite a large quantity of gases have been produced, uh, nearly twice as much as in the electrode on the right. Uh, our solution is sodium sulfate. So our entities then uh, would be sodium ions, uh, sulfate ions and water, consulting our data book. We would find that water would be both the strong uh, reducing agent and strong oxidizing agent. So that's really uh, a unique situation that um, comes up in electrolysis, sometimes the same entity, for example, water is both the strong oxidizing agent and the strong reducing agent. So at our cathode, we have the reduction of water, and that's producing hydrogen gas. Remember that the cathode now is labeled negative, and you can see the black wire in the apparatus is connected to the negative terminal on the power supply. Remember that water is H2O, so we have two moles of water for, of hydrogen for every one mole of oxygen in the compound. So it makes sense that in our evidence we have approximately 16.0 milliliters of hydrogen gas. In our anode, we have the oxidation of water, which produces oxygen gas. And we have roughly half the volume of gas produced, approximately um, 8.0 milliliters. So that's our volume of uh, gases produced at the anode and cathode. So that's 16 and eight. Um, on to diagnostic tests. We're now uh, performing diagnostic tests at each of our electrodes. I am using this tube and test tube to collect the gas produced at the anode here. The water, the solution, the sodium sulfate is displacing the gas. It's been collected in this tube. And now Miss Newton will perform a diagnostic test for hydrogen, which we assume is produced at our cathode. And you hear the pop or squealing sound there. That's a positive identification for hydrogen gas. And now with our sodium sulfate uh, cell testing gases at the anode, I'm opening up the uh, stopcock here and the solution is displacing the gas into the test tube. We have a lit splint and it's going to blow out. And as you can see, the splint partially relights indicating a positive diagnostic test for the presence of oxygen gas. Next, we'll verify the presence of acid and base at our electrodes. So here again at the uh, cathode, on your left, um, notice that the bromothymol blue indicator is turning blue. And so recall from your studies of acid-base indicators that the production of hydroxide ions uh, turns bromothymol blue. Blue. <laughs> And uh, just taking a look at a litmus test as well. If we uh, get a sample of the liquid produced here, the bromo, the uh, litmus, the red litmus is turning to blue, uh, further uh, verifying the, the production of hydroxide ions at our cathode. And moving to our other electrode, 
The bromothymol blue is uh, yellow to colorless here, um, indicating the presence of an acid, and that's verified by our uh, blue litmus turning to red. So we definitely have an acid here at the anode. So in summary, we made an electrolytic cell containing sodium sulfate. The cathode half reaction featured the uh, reduction of water. At the cathode, we had 16 milliliters of hydrogen gas produced. We verified hydrogen gas via the pop test. We verified the production of hydroxide ion, a base, um, seeing how as the bromothymol blue indicator appeared blue and red litmus turned blue. At the anode, uh, that featured the oxidation of water, producing eight milliliters of oxygen gas. Oxygen gas, again verified by the glowing splint test. Production of hydrogen ions, also verified by the clear color of the bromothymol blue indicator, as well as the uh, litmus turning red. And next we have the same apparatus, the Hoffman's apparatus, although now we have sodium chloride, aqueous sodium chloride into our cell. Uh, looking at our data book, we find that once again, we have sodium ions, chloride ions in water. And looking into your data book, you find that water is again, both the strong oxidizing agent and the strong reducing agent. So we get the exact same half reactions that we had for the sodium sulfate cell. However, upon close inspection of the cell, um, you can see that we have lots of gas, approximately 30.0 milliliters of gas produced at this electrode here on your right, connected to the negative terminal of our power supply. So uh, this is our cathode, reductions occurring in our cathode. We've got 30 milliliters of some gas. We would think it would be hydrogen gas. However, here at the um, other electrode at our anode, we have less than one milliliter of gas. So clearly there's something different going on in this electrolytic cell with sodium chloride. Continuing on with our diagnostic tests over here at the cathode, we'll collect some of the gas produced. The half reactions indicate that um, hydrogen gas should be produced at the cathode. And again, that's verified by the pop test. So hydrogen gas is indeed produced at the cathode. In addition, we predict the production of a base hydroxide ion at the cathode. So the blue litmus is blue. The red litmus is also blue. So we have a verification of hydroxide ion being produced at the cathode. Over here at the anode, something looks quite different compared to the sodium sulfate cell. We don't have uh, much gas collected at all. We will um, try the diagnostic for oxygen gas. And the splint immediately goes out. So obviously oxygen gas is not present. Let's try to collect a little bit of the liquid produced at this electrode. So we've collected some of the liquid produced at the anode, transferring it into a beaker. And I'll turn that over to Miss Newton to get a diagnostic test from wafting the sample. Oh yeah, that definitely smells <laughs> like bleach. <laughs> okay, now we're testing out the uh, solution collected at the anode. Here I've got some blue litmus that I'm placing into the anode solution. And an unusual thing is happening, we don't see this typically, is that the litmus paper is actually turning white. You can see it's um, partly pink, um, so there's some acidic nature to the solution. However, um, increased exposure turns the paper completely white. So the paper is being bleached. So to summarize, uh, we have what's called an anomaly here, and this is specifically called the chloride anomaly. It's the only one in our Chem 30 course. 
And what that means is that the anode reaction uh, has been changed. It is not the oxidation of water that occurs, but actually the oxidation of chloride ion forming chlorine gas um, at the anode. We had less than one milliliter of that gas. The gas was not oxygen. That was not verified by the glowing splint test. It was in fact chlorine gas. Chlorine gas dissolved in water is uh, turning our litmus paper white. And that's the effect of bleach on many uh, papers and textiles is to turn that white. That alters our overall reaction our net reaction, as you can see, uh, the minimum voltage uh, required would be negative 2.19 volts. That's just the standard cell potential that we obtain by taking the difference in reduction potentials between our two half reactions. This explains the chloride anomaly. Something different is happening. We're getting some different results at the anode, making this uh, different than the sodium sulfate cell.